So our next speaker is George Newhouse. George is the principal solicitor and co-founder of the National Justice Foundation. Sorry, the National Justice Project. Um, NJP have been taking cases to the federal court to, and have been successfully bringing urgent medical cases from both Nauru and Manus, despite the government spending what was revealed this week in Senate estimates as $780,000 in legal fees since June 2017. So that's a hell of a lot of money to not win any cases. So let's hand, hand over to George. Thanks. Thank you very much. Look, it's very difficult to follow Father Rod. Um, he's an exceptional speaker and I want to actually try and address some of the real nitty-gritty facts about what's going on on Nauru and how children are being cruelly harmed by our government all for the sake of political gain. Um, look, but, but, but there is something positive. For the first time in years, we're seeing a, a community consensus that our government has gone too far in punishing children to ostensibly deter asylum seekers from coming by sea. We've known about the damage that this government is causing for a long time, but it's starting to cut through in the broader community that we have a government that is intentionally destroying children's lives for their political objectives. Yes, and it is shame. It's a matter of great shame that, we, that our government is behaving this way. The groundwork for this change started two years ago. We've been running cases in the federal court for the last two years, building case upon case, layer on layer, to bring children to Australia. And we've actually had success, not just with children, but also with men on Nauru and in Man on Manus Island. And I think what gives us hope is that it proves that these federal court orders for obtaining medical evacuations is proof that strategic litigation and effective advocacy can make a real difference, even in this toxic polit political environment. Um, now look, I just want to take you through a few recent events. The cracks seem to be opening up. There's good news for those of us who can see the harm that our government is causing. You saw last week a senior public servant resigning and going on the 7.30 report and declaring that the government's policy of keeping um, asylum seekers in offshore detention is not working. It is not working. So why are they doing it? The AMA has come out and condemned the policy. Medicine Sans Frontières were thrown off Nauru for doing their jobs as lawyers and they've come out and condemned what's going on on the ruined manners. You had Liberal Party MPs coming out in Parliament last week declaring that the policy is cruel and inhumane. Wentworth electors sent a message to the government about their policies. <laughs> Congratulations, Wentworth electors. And let's hope that that's revisited across the nation at the next election if this policy is not changed as a matter of urgency, and even if it's not. Um, you've also seen the ALP compromise on the bans stopping uh, asylum seekers who end up in New Zealand coming to Australia. The ALP said that they would compromise their policy for the sake of the children on the roof to get them safety. That was a great compromise on their part, and, it was, and once they did, it was rejected by the government. The shallowness of their policy is obvious to, for all to see. You've had Senator McKim, just the day, in the last few days, refused access to Nauru because he wants to see the crisis. What does our government do? Shut him down. And, and even the Wiggles, even the Wiggles have come out in favour of the kids on Nauru. Thank you, Wiggles. And I hear, I hear that the Barnes family are here today too. Thank you very much. Congrats. But look, this change is a long time coming. And although there's a change in sentiment, 
We haven't yet seen the government change their policies. We must demand, we must demand that they shut down their camps in the Pacific and evacuate men, women and children from their Pacific gulags. I want to tell you a little bit about now about the crisis that's actually going on on Nauru. Um, children on Nauru have witnessed um, unspeakable horrors, including self-harm and abuse. They've got limited places to safely learn, to play, to access the support they need to lead healthy, to lead healthy lives. They're suffering deteriorating mental and physical health. Now, the, the National Justice Project, over the last nine months, has brought 116 people, that's 116 people, and 43 kids to Australia as a result of our legal action. And that doesn't include the men on Nauru. Um, just this month, we've had to run three court cases involving three families on Nauru. The first two are already here, but one is a very complex case and we're back in court on the 30th of October. And we've also ensured that a further 28 people this month um, have been approved for transfer and that's families of seven children that have come to Australia this month. Now, you may all have heard about resignation syndrome. It's what these kids are suffering. And look, I, I want to actually quote a, a de-identified report from one of these children. Now, it's quite disturbing and I can see there are a number of uh, children in the audience today and I want parents to just note that this is quite a harrowing version of events. Um, and if you don't want to hear it or you don't want your children to hear it, I would take, I'll give you a moment to um, exit. But um, this is a, a, a child uh, who I'll call Aiden. That's not his real name. And he's an early adolescent boy. I don't want to give his age so no one can identify him. But this is a doctor's report about this boy. One month ago, Aiden overdosed on tablets, oxycodone, metazapine, and sumatropin. His mother found out and made him vomit. He went to the Republic of Nauru Hospital and was discharged the same day. Ten days ago, he shaved his head. His mother asked him why he did it, and he said he wanted to look like when he was dead. Sorry, he wanted to see what he looked like when he was dead. His parents have been staying with him day and night since then to prevent suicide. For the past three weeks, Aidan has withdrawn into his bedroom and is refusing food and fluids. For the first week, he lay in his bedroom in the dark and refused to eat and drink. His mother became so distressed that he ate little in a few days, but then stopped again. He refuses to speak to his father, but will speak to his mother at night. His sleep is disturbed. He's told his mother about his uh, suicidal ideation and intent on multiple occasions and has set a date, and I won't go on because there are children um, in, the, in, in, in this area, but it is quite disturbing. He's not showered for a month and he's only changed his clothes three times in the past month with his mother having to change him. That's just one report. We brought out 50 children, nearly 50 children, in similar circumstances. There are some that are worse than this. It is a shame and our, our Prime Minister should be hang his head in shame for what he's doing to these children. The government has to change their policies and they have to change them now. They are doing unspeakable damage to children. We must demand change. Children deserve a childhood and a happy, free and certain future. It's time to evacuate all kids off Nauru and everyone should be evacuated from offshore detention. Thank you for hearing me today. Let's get everyone off Nauru and Manus. Thanks very much. Thank you, George, and thanks a lot to the NJP for all the hard work that you've put into getting as many people as possible off Nauru and Manus.